From shallow water reefs to the mysterious deep, Ocean X is on a mission to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world. Here's a look into our groundbreaking shark-focused research in their mesmerizing underwater world. Okay, I'm still in the belly. Yeah, still yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. When she rolls up with the... Oh, wow! <laughs> my goodness. Where's my phone? <laughs> Whoa. Look at the width of that thing. This is a monster. She is huge. And now she's belly side. I can't do anything. No, no. We're armed, but mm. there was a young male that one that went away. Okay, she's not here now. Oh, oh, there she is. Oh yeah, but I'm not gonna shoot her. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> my goodness! <laughs> that is amazing. She's gonna eat the gun. She's trying to. Nice positioning by the sub captain. <laughs> this is fantastic. Wow, look at the size. I mean, this female, she's definitely bigger than the sub is long. Yeah. 2018, we got some information that they're seeing juvenile white tips in Haiti. And that's why we were assembling the team again and boarding this beautiful ship, the Aleutia to be able to give us the opportunity to go to Haiti and see if we could observe, catch, satellite tag some of these juveniles because we know absolutely nothing about that stage of their life history. But it kind of sets in, this might not be the same situation we have in Cat Island. So are we gonna catch any in Haiti? Because we're only there for a certain time. And then we get a phone call that a fisherman has one. So now we know, yes, we're finally gonna see a juvenile oceanic white tip. We pull up to the animal, I take the float from the fisherman, and I slowly pull in the line. I'm so paranoid, I'm gonna snap the monofilament off and lose the shark. Finally get it right to the surface. The animal's fine. We're gonna get a satellite tag out on it. I'm gonna go right in, right, right in, ready? ready, ready, ready. One, two, three. <sighs> nice, Sean. Nice. Um, fork is 102. Fork 102. And STL is one. Now we all just go right to work. You know, getting all the samples we need to get, all the measurements, the DNA, getting the satellite tag, which is the most important thing with this with this juvenile. And it's kind of a moment of excitement and relief. You want me to take the... To actually see one alive, get it tagged, get all of the necessary information we want, and see it swim off happily, hopefully still swimming around collecting data, was, uh, was a very special moment. Where he goes. And now it's just a matter of waiting. Three months, the tag will come off, and then we'll start to get a little bit of a glimpse into the vertical and horizontal movements of, of this animal. But I think people will recognize that how significant this population of juveniles is in Haiti, and hopefully we'll be able to garner some protection. Getting that first juvenile oceanic it really, really did feel like we were coming full circle in our own lives, our personal lives, and in this project. We've stuck with it in a way that I don't know how many things I've stuck with this, you know, this passionately. Got it done, man.
principle, that should be quite deep all the way through there, shouldn't it? I mean, it goes all the way up to, like, the Gulf of Aqaba. So we should be in a big river of sharks. But unfortunately, at the moment, we're encountering less sharks than all the rest of the people on the expedition who are not looking for sharks. Almost suggests we don't know what we're doing, except we do. It's just that it's hard. We could chum ourselves, we could strap fish <laughs> all around our BCDs and go for a dive. Just like, oh! Seriously, though, might be... Might be it, worth it, it just for lols. It to try. <laughs> the lols, yeah. The lols. It was worth it. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're only seeing sharks as well. Seeing sharks is one thing, catching them is another. That is very true. So they're all like, oh, we've seen a shark, and we're like, well, that's 10% of the battle. We're aiming for 100%. Fishy life jacket. Fishy life jacket, binoculars, GPS, got the map, and... Pendant works. Yeah, fantastic. Now just to find some megafauna in the Red Sea. The types of animals that we've been looking for in the waters of Neom are what we call megafauna, so like the really cool big stuff. And one of the reasons that we want to find these animals is because they're really good indicators of healthy ecosystems. So sharks, for example, only live on coral reefs that have a bunch of fish on them that they can eat. So if you've got a shark present on your, on your reef, it suggests your reef's pretty healthy. And what we really want to do is attach tracking tags to these animals so that we can actually study exactly how they use these reefs. And so we do that both while we're here in Neom's waters, but also for the rest of the year, because animal tracking tags stay attached to animals for long periods and carry on reporting data back to us so we can find out exactly what they're up to, where they go, and how important Neom's waters are to them. Tag is the wooden stick. I think it was around about five years old that I first decided I wanted to study sharks. I think that was when I started to pester my mum about what I really wanted to do. Maybe she didn't think anything would come of it, I don't know. <laughs> my name is Dr. Yanis Papastamatiou. I have a PhD in zoology, but my specialty are large marine animals, particularly sharks. I remember the first time I saw a shark in the wild. I just swam towards it as fast as I could. It was like this 20 years of something I'd wanted to see, and I finally got to see one. My main area of research is developing new electronic tags that I put on sharks that tell us different things about what those animals are doing. When I first started my scientific career, the technology was allowing us to track fishes and sharks and understand where they would go and when. And obviously we learned a huge amount using those tools. But I always kind of felt that from a knowledge standpoint that was kind of reaching a plateau. 
I really wanted to understand why they were doing the things we see them do. So I started looking into alternative technology. It could measure the acceleration of the animal or its swim speed, or we could put video cameras on those animals and actually see what they're seeing. If we understand why an animal uses a certain habitat, then we can actually forecast and make predictions as to what it should do in a different location. Just because an area is protected, the sharks themselves don't actually know that they're within a protected zone. There's no underwater wall stopping them from leaving that protected area. They're going across different geopolitical boundaries. They'll go into areas where there may be a lot fewer regulations. To me, I haven't finished or reached my end goal until I've published a scientific paper on that work. I treat it the same way I would if I was writing a novel. Most of the public aren't going to be reading scientific journals. So I treat it as a story I'm trying to tell. The public is a lot more supportive about conservation of sharks than they were 10, 20 years ago when they were just considered man-eaters and no one really cared if they were being killed. The drive that keeps me interested in sharks is that I'm always finding out new things about them. As technology improves, we have better tools to answer the questions we want to answer. But what you find is when you answer a question, it often generates five or ten more. I can't imagine not doing research or not being able to dive. So I'm going to keep on doing both for as long as I can. <laughs>